Have you imagined a janitor with $8 million? That's exactly what happened to Ronald Reed. He was a janitor who had $8 million in savings when he died in 2014. He had no lottery wins or inheritance, just good financial smarts. He cracked the code to money, not with fancy math, but with something way more powerful, his behavior. As quoted by Morgan Housel, financial success is not a hard science. It's a soft skill where how you behave is more important than what you know. Money. Some have it, some don't. A few have figured it out. Most are still trying. Welcome to Book Bites Club, your go-to channel for visual book summaries. They're from the world's greatest minds. Today, we'll explore Morgan Husserl's book, The Psychology of Money. It's known to change how people think about wealth. This summary is the outcome of hours of reading, research, scripting, and editing. We hope you'll enjoy it as much as we did putting it together. We are going to split this visual summary into three parts, and underneath each part we have its key learnings. Part 1 focuses on lessons on our mindset towards money. Part 2 lessons focusing on build the wealth. Part 3 lessons focusing on protecting the wealth. Let's dive in! Part 1 three takeaways about our mindset towards money. Takeaway 1 no one is crazy, everyone is different. We all have the diversity of money perspectives. Our money stories are like our unique fingerprints. They are shaped by where we come from, how much our parents earned, and the values we grew up with. We were born into different economic landscapes. Each of us has a unique set of incentives and opportunities. Housel estimates that your experience with money makes up zero zero thousand thousand one percent of what the rest of the world experiences. For example, some people saw the stock market rise a lot when they were young, like those born in 1970. So they feel good about investing. Others saw little change. This made them less interested in investing. Take inflation, for example. Some saw prices go up a lot. This made them worry. But those who didn't see much inflation might not think about it much. We all have different perspectives, and there's no one right way to handle money. It's all based on our life stories and how we see the world. Takeaway. No one is crazy. Our money choices come from our unique life stories and views. Takeaway 2. Money by freedom and happiness. In the wise words of Morgan Housel, the power of money is in buying freedom. The path to financial wisdom is simple. Use money for flexibility and options, not for flashy cars or big houses. The real magic happens when money gives you control over your time. Studies show a surprising fact. After a certain point, more income doesn't make you happier. This point is around $75,000 in the US. Housel unveils the key to happiness. It's the freedom to do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, for as long as you want. Money, when used to buy time and freedom, becomes a source of lasting happiness. The best wealth is waking up and saying, I can do whatever I want today. Money represents time. Money as a tool for gaining control over time is a wise investment. Let's shift our focus from possessions. Respect and admiration come from qualities like humility, kindness, and empathy. It's not about the cool car, it's about the freedom and happiness that money can provide. Takeaway. The less you have, the more you sell your time doing things you don't enjoy. Having more money gives you the time to pursue what you love. In Morgan's words, controlling your time is the highest dividend money pays. Takeaway 3. Don't aim to be rich, aim to be wealthy. Morgan Housel teaches a crucial lesson to his son, invest in your future, not his image. He says that the desire for expensive cars, flashy watches, and grand houses often misses the mark. He explains the misconception with the man in the car paradox. Man is trying to show off luxury car to gain admiration. People may envy luxury car or mansion, but it's the possessions, not the person, that capture attention. Moreover, Housel stresses the importance of distinguishing between being rich and being wealthy. Riches relate to current income and possessions. However, true wealth is held by assets that have yet to be spent. It's not about showcasing what you have, but understanding what you've saved. It's tempting to associate wealth with fancy cars or opulent homes. But appearances can deceive. Many affluent individuals are living beyond their means, relying on debt. True wealth requires self-control and restraint, evident in the assets, not flaunted. Accumulating wealth means saying no to diamonds, watches, and business class upgrades. Takeaway. The real key to wealth isn't spending, but saving and investing. It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep and grow over time. As Housel suggests, when it comes to building wealth, you have no one to impress. Part 2. Lessons focusing on build the wealth. Takeaway 4. 
The Power of Compounding Can you imagine 96.5% of Warren Buffett's net worth? Approximately $82 billion came after his 65th birthday? Did you know that a whopping 99.9% .9 of Buffett's wealth came from compounding? Starting at 10, he kept at it well into his 90s. It's not just about being a good investor, it's about being a good investor since childhood. Compounding is like a financial superhero. Your money earns money, and then that money earns more money, and that more money earns even more, and so on. Buffett's financial journey shows the amazing results of compounding. It happened over a long time. Imagine, you invest $1,000 in the S&P 500 index fund. With a decent 10% annual return, you hit $1,100 by year two. Here's where it gets wild. By year three, you'd have one dollars By year 25, you will have made more than 10 times your initial investment. This keeps on compounding over time. But here's the twist. Let's imagine if Warren had taken a different path. He'd spend, like most young people, his 20s exploring the world and finding his passion. By age 30, his net worth would be $25,000 instead of $1 million. Even with his incredible average returns, his net worth today would be $11.9 million, not $84.5 billion. Takeaway. That's the secret sauce. Consistent compounding over time. In Morgan's words, the most powerful and important book is Shut Up and Wait. It is just one page long with a long-term chart of economic growth. Takeaway 5. The Role of Luck and Risk. Have you ever wondered how Bill Gates, co-founder of Microsoft, became so rich? Luck matters. Making money isn't just about skill and hard work. It's a dance of luck, skill, and unfair advantages. Bill Gates, for instance, a tech genius, yes, but also fortunate. He landed in 1986 at one of the few high schools in the world with a computer, setting the stage for Microsoft. Out of 300 million high school-age folks worldwide, only 300 attended Lakeside in Seattle. Bill Gates was that lucky student with a one-in-a-million chance. Bill Gates acknowledges the role of luck. He says, without Lakeside, there would have been no Microsoft. They helped him create Microsoft with his schoolmate, Paul Allen. The key here, don't focus on individual stories. Look at the broader patterns. Luck and timing play a big role. But here's the twist. There's another member in this tale, Kent Evans. Equally intelligent and visionary, he could have been a Microsoft founder. Unfortunately, a mountaineering accident, a one-in-a-million event, took his life. Kent's story introduces us to the close sibling of luck, risk. Luck and risk are like the wind and the waves that determine the course of a sailboat. The sailor can control the rudder and the sails, but ultimately the direction and speed external factors influence the boat. Those are unpredictable and out of control. Takeaway. Success is full of twists and turns. Luck and risk shape our lives. They are an important perspective to keep in mind. In Morgan's words, success is a dance between luck, skill, and risk. Embrace the winds of luck. Navigate the waves of risk. Understand that the course of success is shaped by a delicate balance. Takeaway six, know when enough is enough. What do Bernie Madoff and Rajat Gupta have in common? They were super rich guys with hundreds of millions in worth. They seemed to have everything. Madoff was the founder of one of the largest wealth management firms, responsible for the largest Ponzi scheme in history, defrauding tens of billions. Gupta was the former CEO of McKinsey, the first Indian American to lead the firm, was convicted for inside trading in 2012. But guess what? Even all the money in the world wasn't enough for them. They went down the wrong path doing some really bad stuff just to grab even more cash. Consider Dave a skilled surgeon who earns a substantial income of around $500,000 per year, which is considered a high salary by most standards. However, his happiness is short-lived when he purchases a vacation home and meets his neighbor, Stanley, a CEO who earns a staggering $10 million. This comparison with Stanley makes Dave feel unhappy. Stanley met Tiger Woods at a party where many wealthy individuals were present. Despite being in the top 1% of the 1% of the 1%, Tiger Woods feels unsatisfied with his wealth. However, when they meet Elon Musk, who is worth hundreds of billions, even Tiger Woods feels like he has less in comparison. This shows how the comparisons between individuals and their wealth never end. It's like climbing an endless ladder, always reaching for the next step. He warns us about the endless game of chasing success and money. Time to rethink that endless climb and be content with what you've got. Takeaway. The message is clear strive for financial freedom, but at some point accept that enough is enough. 
In Morgan's words, there is no reason to risk what you have and need for what you don't have and don't need. Part 3. Lessons focusing on protecting the wealth. Takeaway 7. Getting wealthy is different from staying wealthy. Morgan Housel highlights, accumulating money requires taking risks. It means being optimistic and putting yourself out there. However, keeping wealth demands the opposite. You need to have humility and fear losing it. Morgan says, the goal isn't just to make more money, it's to keep the money and let it grow slowly. Smart choices will not be to put all your money into one risky thing. Instead, spread your money across different asset classes. Examples include real estate, stocks, and bonds. Takeaway, it's crucial to acknowledge that the aim is not just potential gains, it's also to guard against big losses if the market falls. Balancing risk and humility is key to both getting wealth and staying wealthy. As Housel aptly puts it, keeping wealth is as important as making it. Takeaway 8. Decode tail events. Ever heard about Heinz Berggruen? Escaping Nazi Germany, he became a legendary art dealer in America. In the year 2000, Berggruen sold a part of his collection for a staggering 100 million euros. His secret? His collection was adorned with masterpieces from luminaries like Picasso, Klee, and Matisse. It held treasures beyond measure. What set him apart in the art world? Was it sheer skill or a stroke of luck? According to Horizon, the secret lies in the strategy. Great investors amass many artworks and hold on to them. While most may lack significant value, they wait for a select few to rise to fame and immense worth. Berggruen's story is one of long tales, where a handful of events shape the majority of outcomes. You don't need to be right all the time. You need to hold many types of stocks and let a few winners emerge. 99% of his buys held little value, but the remaining 1%, the Picassos of the collection, defined his fortune. Venture capital mirrors this pattern. A few successful startups compensate for many failures. Take Amazon's case as an example. Despite setbacks like the Fire Phone, but Amazon Prime and Amazon Web Services were much more successful. They were far more successful than all the disappointments. In investing, the prevalence of long tails is often ignored. When faced with setbacks, the tendency to overreact prevails. Success in business, investing, and finance depends on tails. Accepting this leads to a vital realization. Things may go wrong, fail, or fall apart. But that doesn't ruin the potential for success over time. Takeaway. Good decision makers acknowledge they won't always be right, but the sum of correct choices prevails. Embrace the power of long tails. A few big events determine success. In Morgan's words, remember Warren Buffett's wisdom. Out of 500 stocks, only a few were most successful. Takeaway 9. Why pessimism is more seductive. Have you thought about why optimism and belief in a good outcome can sound like a sales pitch? Pessimism about money comes off as someone trying to help. Progress is slow. We often miss this because we focus on setbacks. Consider a 40% stock market decline. It grabs attention, but a slow 140% gain over six years may go unnoticed. Tragedies and economic downturns make headlines, but the small triumphs and improvements go unnoticed. Daniel Kahneman wrote, Thinking Fast and Slow. He notes that our pessimism is an evolutionary trait. Losses are more important than gains. Organisms that see threats as more urgent have a better chance of survival. Pessimistic narratives, often intriguing and persuasive, captivate us more than optimistic ones. Take, for instance, warnings of an impending market crash. Highlighting government debt, inflation fears, or new COVID-19 strains tends to grab attention. It fosters a negative outlook. But focusing on raising life expectancy, or on cheaper sustainable energy or fast computing growth, but these might not get the same response. Takeaway. Don't let the appeal of negativity blind you. It blinds you to the unseen victories and improvements that shape our finances. Summary. We explore the transformative insights of Morgan Housel with Book Bites Club. We discussed embrace the diversity of money perspectives, use money for freedom and happiness, invest wisely and compound patiently, navigate luck and risk, know when enough is enough, protect your wealth through humility and understanding long tales, guard your happiness no matter what, avoid questionable dealings, don't endlessly pursue money, and ensure you make time for the things that truly matter in your life. After all, what good is money if you can't find joy in it? Don't forget to subscribe to Book Bites Club for more insights on money wisdom. Keep learning and keep growing.